Hey everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of portal venous gas. Recently I have posted a case on our Facebook page about this case and you have asked me to make a video on this topic. Before jumping into the main content, I'd love to request you consider subscribing our YouTube channel. We are also posting these videos on our Facebook page, so please consider following that also. Portal venous gas means the gas within the portal venous system. Obviously, it is unusual to have gas within a blood vessel. So, there are three basic sources of gas. Gas under pressure, intravasation through injured mucosa and gas forming organisms. This portal venous gas may be a life-threatening condition also, especially if the patient comes with necrotizing enterocolitis, bile ischemia or infection. These two are the common cases in our practice. It may be also due to the peritoneal space abscess, infected gallbladder or liver abscess, necrotizing pancreatitis and the bile malignancies. The benign causes include the gastric or bowel distension, especially the large bowel, inflammatory bowel disease, gastric ulcer. It may also be seen after endoscopic biopsy, liver abscess ablation, gastric tube or post-surgical conditions. You may also find this in benign pneumatosis intestinalis where you'll see air within the intestinal blood vessels which can be well seen on CT scan. Now what will be the ultrasound findings? In case of portal venous gas, this will quite look like a contrast ultrasound scan. You'll see ecogenic mobile foci within the portal venous lumen. If it is distributed up to the distal part, then you'll see some ecogenic foci mimicking pneumobilia. The Doppler ultrasound is very helpful in this case. On pulse of Doppler, with a reverse rainbow color map, you'll see sharp spikes on both sides of the baseline. In regular pulse of Doppler, you'll see these spikes on the site of direction of blood flow. Now, a very easy technique to remember. In case of pneumobilia, the flow of bile pushes the gas towards the hilum. So, you can remember it as C for CBD, C for central gas pattern. And in case of portal vein, the flow of portal veins pushes gas F from the hilum. So, here P is for the portal vein and P is for the peripheral gas pattern. Now, let's see some cases. Here is a picture of the portal vein. You can see some ecogenic mobile structures moving within the portal vein. It is moving towards the periphery. This is the portal venous gas. Another case recently came to me with a severe abdominal pain. This is a young patient of 30 years old. We have checked the ultrasound and with this liver image, the first thing that comes in your mind is the pneumobilia. So we have checked the portal vein here. Let's see on real time. Here is the liver. Primarily, it looks like a pneumobilia. This is the portal vein. You can see some hyper ecogenic mobile structures within flowing towards the periphery. These are the gas within the portal vein. And these air droplets are getting entrapped within the peripheral branches, mimicking the pneumobilia. You can see a huge amount of gas entering into the liver through the portal vein. Magnifying the image may give you a very good understandable view. Here we have checked the linear transducer and you can see hyperechoic foci are deposited at the peripheral part of the liver. These are the entrapped gas foci within the distal branches. To make a better view, we have used the transvaginal transducer. No, it is not a TVS. This is the transvaginal transducer I have put. And you can see this ecogenic foci with a portal venous flow containing ecogenic air droplets seen well here. Transvaginal transducer is not only to be used for transvaginal sonography. It's just a transducer. It's a machine. So you can use it anywhere you need. So here's the picture. You can see the hyperechoic foci distributed peripherally, indicating the air droplets entrapped within the distal branches of portal vein. Here again, these pictures. On first impression, you may call it the calcification or pneumobilia, but it is the entrapped gas. On the left image, you can see entrapped ecogenic foci on linear transducer view and on the right, you can see these ecogenic foci on transvaginal transducer view. 
This transducer is a high frequency transducer, so it may give you a microconvex view as well as a high frequency view. I use this transducer a lot not to do the transvaginal ultrasound. Here is the picture of the portal vein. You can see this is the lumen and this hyperechogenic linear area is the air entering into the liver. You can also see some hyperechoic foci at surrounding region indicating the air droplets. Here we have used the pulse wave Doppler. You can see some spikes within the portal venous wave. These spikes are mainly on the direction of portal venous flow. In normal ultrasound images, you won't see this type of spikes within the portal vein. These appear due to high intensity transient signals. Let's see some other cases. Here you can see the oblique ultrasound of the liver showing several echogenic foci in the portal vein representing the gas bubbles. You can also see some brightly echogenic patches in the liver, more peripherally representing the parenchymal gas. On the right image, you can see an oblique pulse wave Doppler ultrasound in same patient with portal venous gas showing strong high intensity transient signals that appear as vertical spikes within the main portal vein interrogation. Spikes are in the same direction as the flow direction of the portal vein. Here another case of portal venous gas. You can see oblique view through the liver hilum showing two small bright reflectors within the lumen of the portal vein. On real-time imaging, multiple similar reflectors were seen flowing throughout the portal venous system, as we have shown on our previous cases. On pulsar Doppler tracing displayed with a reverse rainbow color map from the portal vein showing multiple bright white signals embedded within the portal vein signal. These represent the strong reflections from the gas bubbles. Artifactual signal spikes are seen associated with many of these bubbles. Here is another case with pulse wave Doppler ultrasound in a patient with portal venous gas secondary to small ball ischemia and pneumatosis showing strong high intensity transient signals superimposed upon the portal vein waveform. These spikes are also in the same direction as the flow direction of the portal vein. On the right, you can see the spectral Doppler tracing of the portal vein in a patient with pneumatosis intestinalis. The spikes present in this spectral Doppler tracing are caused by the air bubbles in the portal vein. These bubbles are traveling at the same velocity as the rest of the blood in the portal vein, but with spectral gain set for blood, the intense sound reflection caused by the passing air bubbles create spikes of noise. Here is another case. You can see bright echogenic patches in the liver, more peripherally representing the parenchymal gas. And on pulsive Doppler, you can see the spikes again in the same direction as the portal venous flow, indicating the portal vein gas. This is a patient diagnosed as a case of infantile hypertrophic pyloric stenosis, which is a rare cause of hepatopotal venous gas. Here on ultrasound, you can see echogenic patches within the liver parenchyma, indicating the parenchymal gas. The echogenic foci are also seen within the portal venous lumen. So in conclusion, early documentation and thorough evaluation in a case of portal venous gas may help patients survive. The life-threatening causes of portal vein gas should be excluded further with other imaging modalities. So thank you for watching this video. If it helps, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and obviously follow us on other social platforms. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.